Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a public records search on John W. France. Now, I do want you to remember that everything in this video is from my perspective. I am not saying that any of this is fact. You should do your own research and make your own decisions. Now, I did provide myself a letter just in case things go bad, and I wanna take a moment to read this to you and then we'll jump into the investigation. At 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning, I am conducting a public records investigation on John W. France. All information in this video should not be taken as fact and should not be used to harass anyone. This information is presented in a way that will allow you to follow along and verify my findings. I have no intention of doing anything sexual with this public records investigation or supplying it with any alcohol. This is mine. It's not for the public records investigation. It's just for me. The whole bottle is just for me. If this investigation is what it claims to be, perhaps the creator should get counseling, like a lot. Thank you. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's hop right on into the investigation. I already have a ton of notes on the infamous justnotepad.com. Here are all my notes. As always, I do want to point out that I have a Patreon. Any support you can give would be really, really helpful. Eventually, I'd like to turn this into a full-time endeavor and maybe have my business on the side and just do YouTube and do these investigations, whether it be TCAP or something else. I'd like to do that full-time, so any support you can give would really help. In the VIP section, I do have all my case notes and some extra information in there as well. So all these case notes will be in the Patreon and anything I add to that or any new information that I might not do a video on, like a FOIA that comes back or anything like that will be in there. Uh, I do have some notes up. First, I went over to Perverted Justice and Nat Buckeye, which was this individual's username, and there was some information. There wasn't a whole lot, but I did look at the full conversation, and I believe there was actually a phone number in there. There was obviously that alibi letter. So let's just take a quick look at the conversation he had with the underage girl. And that is a picture of him. So I'm not really caring about the what he says and all that. I'm just looking for information towards his identity. Now, I believe he did give a phone number. Okay, so here it is right here, 238-5759. He did give his phone number. I had to look up his area to find out the area code, and there was only one area code in the area, which is 937. So that's about all the good information that I got from the chat log. Obviously, people will lie in the chat log all the time, so I want to be careful on what information I'm looking at, but if the decoy did call him, then that information is probably going to be good. Very few of these individuals seem to use burner phones, which is a little odd, but, I mean, they don't always have to, they can be slick, but they, they're not always that bright, so just my opinion. So uh, let's scroll down. So there was that number. Now that number led to true people search and I'll actually show you because I looked him up prior. Okay, so now that number actually led to his profile on true people search. This again was the number that he gave. So reverse phone, put that in. Oh yeah, this always comes up, let me. So we have John Wesley France, age 49, lives in Pleasant Hill, Ohio, used to live in Covington and some other places in Ohio. It gives a few relatives there few details. Okay, so we have all this information here. So we have this, we have an email address and previous addresses. We can click here, view all addresses. So I put all that information into the notes. Then I went over to the US Bondsman site. Now if there's a listing there. It's usually a lot of great information. So the picture matches up and we have some information, registration number, John W. France. We have, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that, we have the age 43, date of birth, July 23rd, 1972. That's gonna be useful later on. We have the height, the weight, the eyes, race, sex, hair, scars and tattoos, and we have a description of the offenses. We have unlawful sexual conduct with a minor, attempted sexual motivation, that was in 2006 in Ohio. We have an attempt, Ohio, and sexually orientated offender. So, And we have the full name here. We have the work address, and we'll get to that in a moment. And that's all the, let's see, oh, we also have vehicle information, Ohio plate, Foxtrot X-Ray Echo 7647 Volkswagen Jetta 2010 color silver. And that is all the information we have on this individual on that site, but that is quite a lot of information. So I have that recorded into here. And then what I did was I did an address reverse on this address right here that is listed on the US Bondsman website, and we'll take a look at that. 
Okay, so we can see that there are a few addresses to this address right here. It could just be 437 East Troy Pike that the addresses come up to, but very specifically, this sweet C thing, contact Force Design Incorporated. We do have an address, we have a phone number, and let's see here. We have the About section, which shows Team. So let's click on that. Now we have all these individuals. So here we go, John France, and we can see this is in fact the correct person's a little older, but we have John France. Okay, so we know where he works, at least we suspect where he works. Let me click on learn more. This says he has been there for 31 years. That would make sense. That's where he was when he was arrested. That's still where he is. It says senior mechanical designer. Specializations, innovation, thoroughness, excellence in all phases of the design process. Fun fact, I can raise my left eyebrow, but not my right. I wonder if that was in the video with Hansen. I don't recall, but uh, that would be interesting if it was. So uh, let's move on. We do have his place of employment now. So let's move on to a new search. Okay, so you can see right here, I did call the place of employment. I pressed one for the company directory. And now I didn't speak to anyone. I did this intentionally after hours. And his name is on the voicemail. I went through the company directory, the automated company directory, and his name is on the voicemail. Full name, John France, ID verification, extension 104, right at his place of business. Hello, thank you for calling Force Design. If you know the extension of the person you're trying to reach, please enter it now, or wait for the prompt to say the name of the person you would like to speak with. For the operator, press zero, or for the company directory, Press 1. Please. Phone directory. For John France. Press 1, 0, 4. Okay, so this is actually interesting. I did a search with the Ohio Secretary of State. I'm going to see if I can bring up the image. Yep. So you can do a free search. This is the Ohio Secretary of State business search. So you can do a free search there and you can see the images associated with the filings for different businesses and also their most updated filing as well. And I did a search on this Force Design website, Ohio Secretary of State Force Design. Said records show the filing and recording of ARF MISTIC of Force Design Incorporated. So this is pretty interesting. I didn't have any reason to believe that uh, he would be listed with the Secretary of State with a company based on his position listed with the company. Okay, so as you can see right here, the amount of capital in which the corporation will begin business will not be less than $500. In witness thereof, I have hereunto subscribed my name on the 12th day of January 1997. It shows Greg Robbins. It shows John France as the incorporator of the business. So it looks like to me, now this isn't an absolute verification, but it looks like to me that he started out being one of the owners of this business. Is he still an owner? Was he voted out when he got in trouble? Is he still an owner? Is he just listed with the business to not shed a bad light on the business after him getting in trouble? Like, why does he not list as one of the owners of the business when he was an incorporator of the business? That's a question that I don't have the answer to right now, but I do know he's with this company and I do know per the Secretary of State, unless maybe this was his dad uh, that went by the same name, that could always be too. Uh, there are other variables. It doesn't necessarily have to be him, but his name is listed with the business. I suppose if we found an arrest record that had his signature on it or something like that, we could compare signatures. There's things you can do there. So that's fairly interesting information. Again, I don't know if he actually owns the company or he... Uh, just maybe his parent owned it, if he has someone with the same name, or what is up with that. I really have no idea, but it is interesting. The next thing I decided to do on this case was a public records request. Now, I didn't know I'd get an answer back in time for this video, but I did. So here is my request right now to Miami County Sheriff's Office. And I said, good afternoon. I would like to request records on an individual by the name of John France, DOB 72372. He is last known to be in Pleasant Hill, Ohio. I am requesting a 10-year history of any arrest records and dispatcher logs in regards to this individual, as well as recordings of any 911 slash sheriff calls over this period of time. If you have any questions in regards to this request, please don't hesitate to reach me here. Thank you for your time in this matter, Eric Neal. I got a response actually just two days later, which is pretty quick. And it said, 
Good morning. We have no record on this subject. Please let us know if we can be of any further assistance. I asked them to extend it out another 10 years. I honestly don't think he was living within the county for 20 years. He could have been, but I don't think so. It was still a simple request to try to find out. It's always worth the request, I think. And I said, also, if this individual had recently passed away, will there be a record of that with the sheriff's office, such as a call to the police concerning such matter? Thank you for your time. So Jennifer Laid gets back to me pretty quickly, and I do appreciate that. She said, Eric, I'm sorry we have no information at all on this subject. If we had calls or reports under his name, or if he was involved at all, we would hold a record of that. So that means, let's stop it right there and just say that that means that they don't have any record of him being deceased. They would have got a service call out. The police would have somehow had to be involved, even if it was just doing a report, and they have nothing. There's nothing under his name where our department had any involvement with him. You may call the 911 center and see if they have calls on him. Other departments may have had contact with him. Now, I may do that. I don't know. It depends. I might try to get more information on this person. I responded, hi, Jennifer. Thank you. I appreciate your time in this matter. Always be polite to the person handling the FOIA request, even if they are obligated by law to do certain things in regards to your FOIA request. Just always be polite no matter what. All right, so let's move on from that search. Now, I did do a relative search, and I'm going to provide you some information here. Okay, so I found a profile, and this profile was found with True People Search and the Relatives and Associates area, and I found a profile of someone, and I did a search, a profile search for France. So I found this, and I'm going to block out probably everything here. So the post says, congratulations, John France and uh, Tara Seitel France, I believe it's pronounced, I could be wrong. Your wedding was just as beautiful as your relationship, so happy for you too. We love you. Now, that was June 15th, 2015, so are they still married? Are they still together? Uh, and again, I know I've said this a couple times with his work and other things. Please, I'm begging of you, do not contact the family. Do not contact the wife. Don't send her messages. She didn't do anything wrong. The family didn't do anything wrong. So please, for the love of God, do not contact these people. Do not engage in any harassment. Okay, so I'm going to click on both of these profiles on John France and the other woman as well. So here we have John France. We have pretty minimal information. So this is a very, very private profile. Now, it doesn't mean he hasn't used his Facebook past 2014. He just hasn't made a public post past that date. So let's look at the other individual. Now, I'm really just not going to show this. Tara is involved in her own business. So it looks like Tara may be self-employed or working with a hair type of business. And uh, she has an Instagram, it looks like, on her profile. So I'm going to look at her Instagram. I've already looked through her profile. There's no search button to look through. And I couldn't find any images of him, of John, on her profile. There could be, but I just searched through for a while and didn't find anything. So... Here is this individual's Instagram, and what I wanted to do is find any references to John. Okay, so I did scroll through her profile, and I found an image here, and I will block most of this out, but we do have an image of John France, and that seems to match up. Now, this was posted August 1st of 2021, has 36 likes, and it says six weeks ago. It shows that Tyra says, I'm a summer, he's an autumn, and this sunflower field is both. Happy August 1st. So that is a picture between both of them with him being featured right in that image. Again, that is August 1st, 2021. Okay, I found another picture here. This was April 1st, 2021, and it shows, let's see here. While you won't see him performing makeovers at the salon, he performs miracles administratively, especially during tax season all with a loving grin towards this girl who dreams and dreams and dreams. John, you are a good man. Now, I did a property search with Miami County Auditor. Now, actually, on this page, I was looking everywhere through all the tabs for the property search. It was very frustrating to me. And then I found they have a super easy access to property search parcel, owner, or address right at the top. Just nice and simple for everyone to see and use, and I completely missed it for like three frustrating minutes. So I'm doing a search on France. And we have 31 results here. All right, we do have a second page of results. And here we go. John W. and Tyra L. France, 2016 East Height Street. And I believe that was the address that we found in the True People search. Let's go back to that. Yep, 
216 East High Street, and it shows that he is the owner of the property. Let me zoom in a little bit on this. And again, this is obviously public record. Single family dwelling, it shows the house here, it shows pictures of it. We have the property card right here. This shows a lot of good information, I'm gonna zoom in. Shows the owner, it shows the owner's address, it's a single family dwelling, owner occupied. It shows that the land value is 19,000, improvements value 145,000, uh, and the assessed value and the taxable value right there. Shows a little bit about their house, full baths, basements. It shows the previous sale history right here. So we can see March 14th, 2018, John W. France and Tyra L. France purchased the property from Ronald Parks, Ronald D. Parks. So they purchased the property, so they've been living there since 2018. And there you have it. I think that's enough information in here. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so that's it. We have the property, where they live, who owns the property, the husband and wife's name. We have some social media information. We have what he looks like. We have when he was last online or when there was last a picture of him. We have a public record search that didn't turn up any information, at least within the past two years of them or three years of them living there possibly longer in the area, but hey, I mean, that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing that he hasn't been involved in any major incidents or anything that would require the police in the past few years. Congratulations. So we have where he works, allegedly, of course, but where he works, all this information is allegedly. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did do a spy dialer on that number to see if it was current, and the number was current, but it didn't have his name on it. It was just a generic recording, like, hi, you've reached this number, leave a message after the beep. No one's name on it, it was just automated. So we found some information off True People Search, and that's about it. So there's not tons of information in this video. There's no wow factors in this video. We do have his property. We do have the fact that he hasn't been in trouble in the past few years. And we have the fact that he has a good, stable family life. And maybe that's what's needed because you see a lot of these individuals I do these investigative videos on. And the ones that are 10 times worse off are the ones that don't have that support system. So... Hey, if the person's staying out of trouble, awesome. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and as always, remember, verify everything.